Um, Dave. Dave, yeah. Dave, I'm so glad uh, we're doing another show. I, so it's going to be a really good time. Why don't you tell people out there where they can find us? If anyone's looking for us, we're right over here at unseemlyquestions.org. And why, why do you do that knowing you know it's dot com? Okay. And so you know there's people out there who would type dot org. Why do you do that? They're not going to do it. They know it's dot com. And also we're at six unseemly at all social medias. <laughs> Thanks. Great. Let's get this show started. Welcome to Six Unseemly Questions. I'm your host, Victor Barnato. This is oh, yeah. my sidekick, Dave Rosinski. We have a great contestant on the show today. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, put your heads together for Paul Barman. Yeah. Come on up, Paul. Hi, hey, Paul. Hi. It's so nice to see you again. Hey, it's Paul. Nice welcome back. It's nice to see back. you too, Paul. I miss you. Excited to How have you, you on the show. Good. I'm, I'm uh, top of the line right now. <laughs> Dave's top of the line. We're um, live, right? Good enough. Yeah, well, he's he's doing it. I mean, it's it's happening and living the dream. Alive. So I guess I guess that's good enough. Uh, we have great uh, studio audience today. Uh, please put your hands together for our studio audience, Nancy Quito and Marina Franklin. Welcome, hey. welcome audience. back, welcome back. You're all wonderful. Uh, so Paul, I'm going to tell you how the show works, and then after I tell you how the show works, we're going to get started. I'm going to ask you six unseemly questions. At the end of each question, I'll ring a bell if I like your answer like this. However, if I do not like your answer, I will not ring the bell and I'll tell you why. Regardless of how many <laughs> bells that you get at the end of the show, I will give you $5 if I uh, decide that your appearance on the show is worth giving you $5. Yeah, yeah. Can I ring a bell if I like the question or not? Absolutely. Do you have a bell? I'm not even allowed to have do, a bell on the show. Do you have a bell, Paul? <laughs> yes. Really? Let's hear it. What does it sound like? Ding! Okay. All right. Ice bell is like ding <laughs> dong. My wife Here's, is home. Okay, Paul. If we're gonna be doing that, the whole, I don't know how the show's gonna go to make this equitable. We'll see. We'll see what happens, Paul. Uh, okay. We're right. gonna start off with your first question. If you're ready, I'm ready. Okay. Your first question. Uh, will you make up a rhyme about how cool I am? Definitely. Don't do it, don't do it bro. Why not? <laughs> because it's not true. But. Yo, Victor Vernado is better than a liquor tornado. Oh, all totally right. Totally makes sense. You know, I don't usually feel like I have to give people the bell, uh, but I feel like I have to, even though I got to be honest, I was not fond of that rhyme, but I will give you a bell. What were you, what were you hoping for? Um, I, was, I was like hoping for like, Victor Vernado, he's super cool. Anybody who thinks he's not has broken the rule. <laughs> My rhyme is like a trillion times no one, better than that. By one. the way, no one whoa, would ever say that. Whoa, whoa. Just because Victor you rhyme Vernado. multiple syllables, do you think that just makes you rhyme king? That in conjunction with the message. Also, so you could. Better on both levels. And okay, also, you, know you, could, you could pronounce his name Victor Vernado. He's like a tornado. I wish I had not given you the bell with this argument that happened after it, but I did. So I'm going to let it stand. All right. <laughs> I'm defending you can't take that bell back, back Brad. All the contestants who pretended they were here weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> Victor Vernado is never cool. And if you think he is, you a fool. Oh, <laughs> I like Marina's rhyme that's better. Pretty, that's great, Marina. Only because wow. it's accurate, it's very true. And you should have been that great, that cool on your episode. That would have been amazing. Well, you didn't ask her that question. I didn't. That is true. It's probably my fault. All right. So before we go on to question number two, ball, Paul, I called you ball. Yeah, ball. Oh, hey, ball, you ready for question two? <laughs> ball. Ball is Pardon. life. Uh, before we go on to question number two, can you tell people out there what you do? Hi, oh, you've drawn a picture. I'm handing over the most aggressive trophy. Oh, my who's colleague. getting that? Oh. Who's getting that? Uh, that's actually, uh, if you're listening to Paul's episode, uh, before you've heard Mar Marie, uh, be actually, before you've heard Nancy's episode, then you won't know what that is referring to. But if you want to know all the canon, you got to go back and listen to Nancy's episode if uh, you want to know what that was about. Okay, Paul, uh, please uh, tell people out there what you do. I am a writer and uh, I'm a copywriter to make a living and I'm a lyricist uh, down to the marrow. Down to the marrow. That's pretty deep. Breaking bones with the stones. What? What are you? Nothing. 
Mar ah, bone marrow, marrow. Is a reference. Oh, bone marrow breaking bones with the stones. <laughs> Got it. All right, that could also mean you're like playing dice with the Rolling Stones, I guess, too, right? Totally. Yeah, yeah. That Everyone plays dice with the Rolling Stones. That's totally what it means. All right. So in the bones, escape. he's trying to add some vernacular. Yeah, yeah. Me, to what me, he said. I play dominoes with Mick Jagger. <laughs> dominoes. I, I I think it's important for us to move on uh, to the show because <laughs> yeah, it is. Issue. Um, I don't want to ruin anybody's day, but we are doing a game show. Too late. Right. Uh, time for question number two, Paul. Question number two: What lesson have you learned from being a dad? Oh, papa, papa, papa. What single lesson? Uh, I guess you can interpret the question any way you want to. Most important <laughs> or single? What What have you learned? Uh, what lesson have you learned from being a dad? Well, Ooh. let's see. Um, you know, my gut response, which I don't know if it qualifies as a lesson, is like, you are occupied. It's pre-dad life. I mean, th there's always ups and downs. And I suppose stagnation, which is probably the worst state you can be in, is still possible as a dad, but like you are compelled to push forward no matter what. So if you had any self-destructive tendencies, they are now mass destruction. And I don't know if a lesson qualifies as a change, but that's where my mind went when you asked me. Nice. I, All you, right. know, you know what I thought? Occupy Pole Street. <laughs> are you just so, thinking so, of puns is that what you're doing that's what i do on this show that's what I, do. So I had a question because i've just met paul for the first time so you're a dad how, how i many have children? two how old 15 and 12 boys oh my god teenagers wow, wow. lord <laughs> it's rough for them i mean yeah. you know i was excited to be yeah. invited to this because this is like major socializing by quarantine standards but the truth is, I, I, I spent <laughs> yeah. my childhood and well, whatever, I, I got used to occupying myself and going whole hog into studying the arts that I wanted to emulate or whatever. The way that these guys are being denied face to face socializing is something that is going to have it put it this way, we don't know the long term effects of, of COVID on our lungs. We don't know the long-term effects of COVID on the erasement of a generation of elders. And we the also don't too. know the long-term effect of COVID on the development of, of these kids. And I think I'm lucky right. that I can't be totally ISO, ISO, isolated, lone own only, in, because I have my family around. And I think it would probably be like pretty distraught if I was just some guy in an apartment but on the other hand it's right. it's brutal but i i know you don't like doses of reality so, and i'm so glad we're here no it's actually nice you guys an organ is one of my favorite uh instruments no actually <laughs> i i i did say i i didn't say i don't like doses of reality what i said was i'm not ringing the bell because of the dose of reality but now i'm ringing a bell because of the dose of reality all right yo i so i so i so it should be a song for sure definitely well, and it's was... difficult when you, your kids are isolated with you because like, you know, I know growing up, so like 30 years on, my, I said to my brother, oh, you remember the time we did this? And my mom's like, you did what? So, you know, kids need a chance to be away absolutely. from the parents so that 30 years later you can say, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I do TT Thursdays with my nieces who are teenagers. Every Thursday we do FaceTime. TT? Just so, yeah, that's Spanish for aunt. Not, t oh. not titty. I didn't think it was not titty. Because yes, you did. Yes, you did. I think you would have said. I think you would have said that if it was that. Victor so was I like, "Did you say pee pee?" Did you say <laughs> I did not know. Hey, what this is a family meant. oriented. No, no. TT Thursdays, just because I got nervous about exactly what Paul was talking about the socialization. So yeah. I want to make sure they're okay. That they have something other than just their teachers and their parents and their friends, but something like an adult. Yeah. And I'm finding out. You know what? They're very upset with the older generation for letting them down. That's yeah. what I, yeah. You can. Sucks, Victor. You so really Give me a bell. Do I get a bell? 
Uh, no, you don't. I, you I are, give you a bell. You're, not, if I was you're no to longer have a contestant. I'm sorry. You don't get a bell. Give me a goddamn. Uh, <laughs> this is time for question number three. Time for question number three, Paul. Are you more whimsical or magical? Good question, wizard. You know what? I appreciate being able to define myself. <laughs> yeah, you are. You you so, you're you can totally define yourself. I would go for magical, but I have plenty of love for whimsy. Uh, but you would go for magical. You mean that's what you want people to see, or that's what you what how you envision yourself? Both. Wasn't Both. whimsy George Jefferson's wife? <laughs> no, that was that. That would be wheezy. wheezy. That's I wheezy. I know. I know. I know you know kidding. that, Dave. I know. I know. Uh, it's really being a sidekick, Dave. It's that, rough. It's actually. Rough I think. Show. I think that that uh, that. Uh, answer or at least that question uh it actually relates to our previous question where we're where you started or your previous answer where you're talking about your kids because i always think about like my friends who are uh like imaginative artistic and charismatic dads like those you know like comedians and comedy writers and just like other people i have uh, friends out who i have who would be like if you have to be stuck with your dad at least they're a fun imaginative dad like yourself is what i'm saying like you're you're definitely like a person whose like whole heart is in art and so that's kind of cool Thank kids you. don't get that though normally right they will always find a way to resent their parents for something right or of course you know, i'm glad you brought this up because it relates to what marina said and i've been trying to put this in a rhyme as concisely as possible the notion of teen angst is Kids can sense that the older generation screwed the pooch because they're inside a system that's not functioning and they're being put on a track to nowhere and they know it's all bull and they don't feel like competing for nothing. Mm -hmm. So this whole idea that like teenagers are rebellious because hormones is really got to be left in the 19th century. Mm -hmm. Parents just don't understand, man. But weren't teenagers rebellious like at every, st like, at, at every stage of history? Everybody should be rebellious in every stage of history. Listen, you're just like you're just like putting a stamp on rebellion always. You're just like rebel all the time. So when yep. you say when you say the teenagers aren't rebellious, but you're like everyone should rebel. You're more woke. I'm saying that the separation and individuation process of maturation is natural, but just labeling them as rebellious from the POV of someone who's accepted everything because their expectations have plummeted is not valid. I agree. I agree with. I would agree with that. I don't agree with your vocabulary. Just fuck. Right, he should put that it, verse on wax. He's right coming there. out like that. I, I'm not <laughs> put trying that to on do it. Wax? I don't know. I'm just. You got no, me I'm just kidding. I, I'm just kidding. I, of course, I like your vocabulary. That's part of what you do. You work. You work and with words all the time, and you're always like turning them over and seeing how you can put them together. Why wouldn't you? Speak like that. I was just kidding. I like your vocabulary. Yeah, he was just Oh, thanks, kidding. Vic. I mean, it's better than Perfect. mine, but it's fine. <laughs> I, I love it. I just wish someone could explain my hormonal hot flashes for me. Definitely not Victor. I can't I can't <laughs> He's explain definitely them. Not the person. I can't explain them. I mean, I can I take mean, I can take wild stereotypical guesses if you'd like. Yeah, don't ask him. <laughs> <laughs> but I, but I do explain. I do get a bit more like angry when I don't have my tea. Huh. Yeah, Maybe you you're making you'll make a great black uh, middle aged one day. <laughs> Wait, huh? I'm, I'm sorry. What did you say, Paul? I said maybe Big Mouth can cover middle age one day. Oh yeah. Maybe Big Mouth. Oh, Big Mouth the TV show. Yeah. Yeah, they should. Maybe they will. You know who they knows everybody? Who knows? All right. Season so, uh, let's say you know what I'm going to say. No bell on that question. What? Uh, uh, what I said was I was going to say no bell on that question. Bells mean nothing to me. <laughs> Bell means nothing to him anyway, so you shouldn't be upset, Marina. Oh dear. All right, it is time like for Angel doesn't get her wings. It is time for question number four. Uh question number four. Work. Is there a movie you think everyone should see? Several. But is one, there... one that I one recent one that I told everyone to see was hypernormalization. Oh, why? What's so, what's so good about that movie? Because maybe I'll see it. Well, it just seemed to explain 
the era that is hopefully winding down a tiny bit, but not really, that we got ourselves into. It came out like 2016-ish, and there was just basically the nature of disinformation was not so closely inspected yet. And that one was kind of like telling people, it's hard for me to summarize and I haven't seen it in a while, but the, the, the idea that like algorithms are feeding off of bad feelings mm -hmm. and like if we're going to let ourselves go to that, it's going to be bad, was not really in the mainstream conversation when the movie came out. And it's just very, very interesting. And, um, but there's so many great movies that everyone should see. I mean, the other one that I would instantly respond is Verhoeven was quite prophetic in many of his films. And I remember when one of my friends was like, Starship Troopers is just about like big gross bugs. It's trash. It's a B movie. When it came out, I was like, I, I couldn't. I could not believe how advanced it was. I'm going to give you a bell because Starship Troopers is one of my all-time favorite movies. And I love Paul Verhoeven. Love him. So love much. him. Yes. Like, he, all of his stuff is great. I even love Showgirls. Oh, me too. Oh. I love Showgirls. It's so crazy. You look saved <laughs> by the bell also, clearly. Clearly. What, what are you even talking oh, about, Dave? Oh, oh, Saved oh. by the Bell, the person who was in Showgirls. That's what I'm talking about. You and your yeah, bell. She was in Showgirls. Marina thought it was uh, a whole different thing. She was I did. It. I thought it was a dig, and I was like, yeah. But you didn't <laughs> but it doesn't even make any sense. It didn't. And you were just going you were just going. I was for just it, like, though. yeah, get upset about it. <laughs> yeah, get mad, bro. <laughs> yeah, saved by the bell. Uh. All I kept thinking about was monoliths popping up everywhere in Space Odyssey 2000. Yeah, the aliens are coming, man. This is it. Oh, yeah. All right. It is time for question number five. All right. Question number five. When was the last time you had to forgive someone? Woo! Good question. How come so I don't get hard. questions like this? Why are you you had, so hard? You had great questions. I mean, <laughs> my face all the time oh yeah um do you say sor sorry like a canadian to yourself i will now who's sorry canadian about that. so yourself all the I time accept my apology why do, why do you why do you say that it's yourself i really hate thanksgiving and i can't intellectualize myself out of it and i just white knuckle through it in a very foul mood and right now i know i do it every year and i know i'm going to do it i'm going to try to be different next year somehow which requires me to forgive myself for always doing it okay i feel like i i feel like if i were going to answer that question i would also say the same thing that it's like myself who i have to forgive the most often because i'm always doing things and then and then immediately being like, why are you doing that? And then have to be like, okay, okay, pull it together. It's all right. All right. Move on. Don't do that again. <laughs> this is how I talk to myself. That's 2020. Every, all of us have done that. That's exactly. like perfect for 2020. I, I forgave myself a thousand times the other day for looking at my ex on TikTok. He's, so, <laughs> he's not 12, by the way. He's not. He's of age. He's age appropriate, but... I had to go on there and look at him because he, he used to be a model. Um, but yeah, anyway. That's so funny because to... I equivalent. Uh, sorry, I didn't mean to speak over you. That's okay. Go ahead. Um, I think of Fortnite and TikTok as kind of of the same age group. <laughs> yeah, yeah well, you're, you're really doing it, Marina. Yeah, I do TikTok and Fortnite. Yes, I do. Whatever but it I, takes. But I apologize to myself for all of it. I it's think 2020. That, I think you don't have because, to say sorry. Because you said that, it may, may be interesting because uh, for, for me, because you said that, it, it lets me know that maybe you don't know as much about Fortnite as you think you know, because it's bigger than most people think. It is like Fortnite is like a social media destination. It's oh, not really? just a game. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, like, let's go like... hang out in Fortnite. Like yeah, it's, a, it's, a social, it's a social destination. Do people hook up on there? sometimes you can i mean that's the now problem you're interested dave you can i mean there i, I might have to download an account <laughs> every now and then you'll have a 
a kid that comes on when you're playing squads and you'll hear like the mom in the background going, what I tell you about getting on, get off that damn thing. <laughs> so, you know, oh. <laughs> uh, great information, Marina. Thank you. <laughs> you are very welcome. Thank you, Marina. Victor, get uh, off that damn thing, Victor. I thought that was an interesting conversation. So you get a bell on the question. All right. Uh, it is time. For... It still means nothing to me. Okay, great. <laughs> You know, great attitude. All right, it is time for uh, question number six. Question number six, finish this lyric. Do the right thing, not talking about a black and white thing. I'm talking about a right and wrong thing. I am so sorry. No, that was Redhead Kingpin. Uh, do the right thing, not talking about a black and white thing, because that would cause conflict and make this illegit. I am so sorry. Uh, no Me bell. Too. On that I guess I got to look up that song. <laughs> it, it's one of my favorite songs from my youth. The chances of you knowing it was, was very slim, <laughs> but I just thought I'd throw it out there. Because, you I know, did maybe my best. You would. I've never heard it. I have heard uh, his name referenced in a Doom song, though. Yeah, Redhead Kingpin. He was he he was great. He was a good he was a good rapper. A, Paul should get a bell for just entertaining that awful question. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Somebody. Oh, there's a lot worse questions please. than that. Marina. Now, I think that I think awful. that you that was aggressive. That was obviously that was working through aggressive. a lot of anger. <laughs> I think I think Marina's just saying what everybody's <laughs> thinking. So I don't think she's so. Should be it's blamed just for unfair. That. No, but it was it was unfair. It we was handled it. It was unfair. It's done though. It's over <laughs> now. We, so. This ain't oh. six unfair questions. <laughs> it is uh six it unseemly kind of is, questions. Though. Actually, so. I really got off light. I, I'm very grateful that we could have a real conversation. It was I agree. It could have been much worse. Uh, but now that you've <laughs> now that you've answered all six of your questions, it's time to decide whether or not you get five dollars. But before we do that, can you tell people out there where they can find you? Well, right now, the main destination is mcpb.bandcamp.com. There, there are other places that I'm occasionally interacting with, but if we're going to just choose one, that would probably be it. That's great. I mean, your music is fantastic. Uh, it's so much Thank fun, you. always. So, Thank you, Victor. Yeah, so uh, please, if you're out there, check it out. I, I think you won't be disappointed unless uh, you are. All right, so... Uh, great uh, question answering. So now it's time to decide whether or not you get $5. Uh, we will canvas the room. Let's start with Dave. What do you think? Should Paul get $5? I think you left that Bluetooth keyboard right behind you to like compress us all like you're showing off. You think? Okay. We all see my that keyboard. Yeah, it is. It is a Bluetooth keyboard. I do yeah, use I know. it for my laptop, which is on the desk back there. So okay. it does happen. I use it. Compress cool. Are you impressed? You didn't even Don't answer the question. That. All right, uh, Nancy, what do you think? Should Paul get five dollars? <laughs> I think yes. Yes. Oh, you think yes? No reason, yes. just just yes. No, no. It was interesting. I don't have kids, so like the whole the, the question where we're talking about you know children and and dads and whimsical and it, it was interesting to me. Yeah, and obviously it's something you feel strongly about. So yes. All right. Okay. She's nice fully behind that keto. five dollars for Paul. Uh, Marina, what do you think? Should Paul get no, $5? No, no, yes, of course he should. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't get, go, don't get, don't get that. Nuts. No, I'm joking. That's it's it. Fine. You can't change your answer. You can't change your answer I'm now. I'm changing my answer. Of course he should. And right. I think he should also replace, he should be on like Joe Biden's counts, like for education or yeah. Betsy DeVos. Like just because that, that whole idea needs to be really talked about as we talk about vaccines we need to talk about what state our children are going to be in two years from today because i am nervous because my nieces said they hate us so yeah i'm worried because i'm going to be old soon and i need someone to take care of me and if they're feeling that kind of way i'm in trouble so mm. do you think they're going to like cryo freeze all of us <laughs> yeah it's possible what are you going to be 30 yeah <laughs> all right uh so uh w let's ask rachel rachel what do you think uh should paul get five dollars um i like how paul barman pb stands for peanut butter and that to me is worth five dollars do you have a strawberry in your head yeah okay what? it's not real looks delicious though <laughs> it does right yeah 
All right, yeah. Rachel, thank you. You were almost helpful this time. Uh, almost <laughs> doesn't count. Oh, <laughs> yeah, she throws up the peace sign before she disappears. That's how she does it, everybody. Yeah, and then she goes and eats her plastic strawberry. All right, so right. Uh, the only person left to ask about it is you. Uh, Paul, what do you think? Should you get $5 for appearing on Six Unseemly Questions? Why not? Yeah, why not? Well, I mean, you were yelling uh, five. Uh, you're yelling. The bells mean nothing to you. You're yelling that the whole show, That's which true. is, I would say, an unreasonable way to be on a show where you are a guest. I don't I think doing he was my best. yelling. Yeah, I wasn't. I, I feel like what, Kim, oh, now you're both no. trying to gaslight me. No, I feel oh. like I feel like Paul. Oh, I was yelling. <laughs> I feel like Paul trying to understand you know the what? rules. You know, is... Decision has been made. No five dollars. How dare you gaslight me on my own show? Yeah, how dare you? <laughs> I think he was just there. passionate. There's a difference between passion hmm. and yelling. Uh, trying thank to raise you, my Maria. position comes at a cost. Uh, I will say this though. I was it was great having you on the show. And I really you, appreciate Victor. you being here. My pleasure. I, I, I didn't get that. Uh, I, you got something like you guys. that. Though. Not exactly that, Marina. We got something like Marina, that. Marina, he said something nice, right? Or no? Yes, I definitely did. I, I say something nice about <laughs> we'll everybody. No matter, no ma even if they're like you, Marina, I say something nice about everybody. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. It's part of the rules. <laughs> say something nice. Yes, no, that's it is. definitely it not is part, part of the rules, rules on this show. Uh, so. Uh, Dave, uh, yeah, what Dave. did you learn from this week's show? I learned that you called Paul Ball once. Um, <laughs> I learned that okay. um, you didn't like Paul's rap about you, which I, th I thought it was pretty good. Uh, okay. I, I liked Hi. how uh, you you were on the internet. It's almost over. It is Should almost come, over, Paul. Come the people? Paul, bring him on. Paul, <laughs> bring him on. All yes, right. Guest uh, starring. Well, then everybody, I should tell you that you can find us at unseemlyquestions.com and six unseemly on all social media. Thanks everybody. Great Yay. show.